Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, HIRA Threat and Hazard Identification Risk Assessment and Stakeholder Preparedness Review and NIM CPG 101 Deep Dive Webinar. Um, I'm Perry Rogalski, uh, Indiana De Department of Homeland Security State Planning Director, and with me on Teams is Joshua Kilu. Uh, our IDHS uh, Cybersecurity and Risk Assessment Planning Manager. So as a reminder, um, if uh, for some reason this call gets disconnected, please first try to reuse the calendar link to log back in. Um, if that link is broken, we will email you all out a new link. Um, please also save your questions until the end. Um, during the Q&A or uh, you could add it in the chat feature and we'll address it in the end. Um, and if there's something urgent that you need to uh, stop me on, not a problem. Joshua will uh, will let me know and um, and uh, we want to make sure that that, um, that that we capture everybody's questions. Um, also, um, here we have a uh, raised hand option and um, 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 and and also, if you would, in the chat option, uh, please sign in, putting your name and PSID uh, in the chat button. Uh, and as you can see here in the middle of the of your screen, or maybe on the top, mine has been moved around a little bit in my team. But you have um, your on and off camera, uh, your mute and unmute uh, button, um, and um, uh, for this, uh, we have a raise and lower hand, the chat, um, and then you can also click on the participant button there with the people and see who's on the call. So, um, so that's how you uh, are able to uh, able to utilize those. And um, hopefully, um, um, and and I, like I said, please mute your button um, unless um, um, uh, you're asking a question. Uh, we, we appreciate it. OK, so first things first, um, let's talk about um, assessing. So emergency management is the management function charged with creating the framework within the communities to reduce vulnerability uh, to hazards and uh, cope with disasters. It protects communities by coordinating and integrating all activities necessary to build, sustain and improve the capability to mitigate prepare for, respond to, and recover from threatened or actual natural hazards, acts of terrorism, or other man-made disasters. Communities across the United States have very different risk, as do our counties within the state of Indiana. It's a responsibility of emergency managers to assess the risks specific to their community. Uh, please, if you are uh, on the line, please mute your button. Thank you very much. Um, budgets, human resource management decisions, uh, plans, public education programs, training, exercising, and all other efforts necessary should focus on the hazards that pose the greatest risks first. An all hazards focus ensures that plans are adaptable to a variety of disaster types, and that by addressing the hazards that pose the greatest risk, the community will be better prepared for lesser risks as well. The best way to assess risk and capability is by asking these questions and developing a product to capture the critical data. So the questions are, what is the state of Indiana's greatest threats and hazards and what is the priority? How prepared is the state? What is our current and targeted capability? What preparedness gap does the state face? What strategies does the state need to develop and address those gaps? And what funding sources does the state have to address those gaps? So I don't know about you guys, but I just love pictures. And, you know, to me, uh, it just speaks a thousand words. And they know that most people um, use pictures um, um, and, you know, and they and they say that they learn better off of them. So I like drawing it out. So I drew out this one for you guys, you know, and I like the KISS method, you know, keep it simple, Siri. OK, so. Let's go over this. Um, in the middle is what is the uh, National Preparedness System, also known as NPS, 
Uh, this is the graph that they use. Um, and on the outside, you could see where it has whole community, national incident management team, which is NIMS, and then core capabilities. And then around the inside of it, um, there's, there's, there's sections to it. And what I've done is I've outlined how it is that we actually address those sections. So in the top here, identifying and addressing risk. So this is when we use our HIRA and then into the thyra. So the HIRA um, identifies the greatest natural human caused and technological hazards and threats. I'm going to be going through the HIRA and talking about that in this um, in this webinar. Um, so we'll be able to to deep dive into that. So you guys will be able to really understand and then apply um, what it is that we learned today. The thyra uh, lists those greatest threats and hazards um, that we've identified in the thyra, hopefully, gives context, describes impact and impact data, and establishes the capability targets based on the National Preparedness System's five mission areas and 32 core capabilities. Again, I will show you the tools that we have created um, that helps break this down into kind of bite-sized, chewable chunks that um, that everybody's able to um, to uh, to do. Following the thyra, the SPR and the thyra are are blended together. Um, they feed off of each other and the SPR assesses the current capabilities um, that have been identified in the thyra and it identifies those capability gaps and approaches to the gaps and then it assesses the impact of relevant funding uh, sources on those capabilities. Then we look at building and sustaining the capabilities. So after the SPR, we prioritize the investment in the areas that, I've, that have addressed and identified the gaps and sustainment needs. So then we go along here to planning and delivering the capabilities. So how do we do that? Well, we develop and we update the plans, very much including our mitigation plans because those are critical um, uh, when we are trying to develop our thyra and SPR because they're based on those capability targets and those gaps. Then we look at validating the capabilities. How do we do that? We update our training and we use the capability targets when assessing performance in real world incidents as well as evaluation criteria in our exercises. And then finally, reviewing and updating the data. We use those evaluation results that we've re that that, that, that we've obtained in our exercises to drive the continuous improvement process and then update the HIRA, thyra SPR. And basically, we just start that entire cycle all over again. And finally, the communities can use all of these results as justifications for the preparedness activities and the grants that they apply for. Okay, so let's look here at some due dates. Um, so as, as you know, uh, the 2020 SPR report um, is due on the uh, 16th of November. As of today, we've had 15 counties respond to them. Um, obviously, um, uh, since it's due on the 16th of November, uh, we would really uh, ask you guys to, um, uh, to expedite those and I'll be going over um, that process today. So uh, showing you how how um, um, I don't want to necessarily want to say easy, but how easier it is um, based on what we did last year to actually update those and uh, and then upload those into Web EOC. So the 2019 and 2020 county reports um, are in Web EOC uh, for the counties to download and then upload uh, the 2020 uh, county reports. Um, we have your your shell from what you've identified in 2019 and we'll, you'll be able to update those and then re-upload those um, when you finish them into Web EOC. So the Thyra is due every three years and then the SPR is due every year. So what we've done is the Thyra and the SPR we completed in 2019. The SPR we will complete, we did it in 2019, we will also do it in 2020 and 21, 2021. Then we will start a new Thyra SPR cycle, um, which will be due in 2022. 
So the 2020 NIMS CPG 101 survey um, uh, is due on the 30th of November. We've we've extended it out a little bit past the uh, thyrus, the uh, the uh, SPR this year, but as of today, we've only had 50 responses. So uh, again, better than the SPR. But we would uh, ask you guys to please um, uh, be able to uh, um, uh, finish that as well. I've attached uh, the link here, and you all will receive. Uh, not only this um, uh, this presentation, but also well, it'll be uploaded into WebEOC, uh, but also um, that link as well. So our 2021 HIRA, uh, it's due every year uh, on the 31st of January, and it is also located in WebEOC. Now, what we've um, done this year because our uh, we we are going to have a 2021 HIRA um, because it closes out our current HIRA that we have going that um, um, that ends this year. And so uh, the new HIRA report will be released in January of 2021. You're going to see some of the data, which is um, um, ever fluid, um, but we will be utilizing um, all of the data that that we have available for that uh, 2021 um, report. And so uh, and then what 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 we've decided to do is offset the HIRA and the Thyra, um, and it just happened to be um, lucky for us that that the HIRA is going to be captured because we're going to change it to every three years uh, for the state report. Um, uh, but you guys will be reporting it out every year, and then we'll be utilizing all of that data to then set it up for the next year, which in which the Thyra and SPR, um, the new cycle will begin. So it'll establish the new foundation uh, for the 2022 Thyra SPR. All right, so let's quickly look at the uh, 2020 NIMS and CPG 101 survey. So the NIMS survey is directed from Homeland Security uh, Directive uh, HSPD 5, which requires the adoption of the NIMS by state, tribal, territorial, local organizations, and for federal preparedness assistance through grants, contracts, and other activities. Uh, the 2020 Comprehensive Preparedness Guide 101 is uh, the assessment that supplements uh, the CPG 101 uh, that tracks the timing for developing or revising our emergency operations plans. It also captures planning elements contained in CP CPG 101 and enables you to analyze your emergency operation plans. Uh, this is a mandatory federal report that each state must complete and we do not want obviously to report in a vacuum or guess what your counties are doing. Um, so this is why we ask you uh, to complete this as this is part of our assessment process. And when you log into this link, this is what it will look like. Just make sure that um, um, when you when you look at it, that you're actually looking at the 2020 uh, emergency preparedness survey uh, versus the 2019 since um, they look similar except for the um, except for the date. So we want to make sure that we're capturing um, the correct um, the correct survey. All right, let's uh, jump into the uh, HIRA, the Hazard Identification Risk Assessment, which yes, is different than the Thyra. OK, I know that this is a crazy looking slide. Um, and but what I wanted to do was kind of take a minute to show you how to access the HIRA um, for your portion of it, uh, for your reporting portion of it uh, in, in, in WebEOC. So, and, and basically, and, and then go, go over it with you as we go through this um, um, uh, about how it is that we actually use this. So, so the first step is when you when you log in, you're going to go up here to the boards. You're going to throttle down into the higher assessment. And then you're going to click on it and a slide that looks like um, the center slide here that has um, um, uh, the top center slide that has add higher info, um, show higher info and details. Um, it's going to look like that. If you see here in the next slide going over to your right on the top right, uh, the details, this, if you click on those, it will show you 
um, the details for uh, whichever year that is there for that county, and it will list out um, that that view. And then down here to your bottom left, if you uh, click on that uh, see higher assessment info, it will then open that up and you'll be able to see the different counties and then how they actually assessed um, each of those threats and hazards. Going over to the lower middle, um, when you actually click on adding the new hire info that you have, um, this is um, how you add your, um, your additional information and um, each of those areas uh, to the left um, are drop down menus. And as you can see on the on the first one, it's the man made threats. Um, and if, if you tab down on it, it will show you uh, natural hazards, technological hazards, and then there's a subcategory. Um, and then if um, and then a threat and hazard um, underneath it. Uh, and there is uh, possibly several of them that you would need to rate and then uh, your probability. Um, uh, magnitude, severity, warning time, and duration. And then there is also a, um, uh, uh, a uh, 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 supporting information block in, in which you uh, can write in um, what it is that, um, um, as far as how it is that you rated that. And once you do that and you click save, uh, it will, um, um, in that assessment, it'll automatically upload that. Uh, into the bottom portion um, of your um, of your assessment there, and and then you'll be able to um, uh, to go in and it will have that view that is up on the top right. Uh, if at any time during that self assessment uh, you need to click uh, for help to see what it is that you need to do, there is a help button. We are currently updating that help button as there's some information in there that um, that is a little bit dated. So we want to make sure that uh, that. that that we provide you with the most um, up to date product. Now, uh, what some of the areas here and, and, and how it looks, you could say, well, this is pretty subjective. So how is it that I'm going to be able to really um, uh, assess um, each of these risks, um, you know, just based on these numbers? Well, let, 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 let me show you here next. OK. So what you're looking at is what's called the calculated priority risk index formula. So well, actually the formula is on the bottom. So it takes the probability plus the severity or magnitude plus the warning time and and then the duration and it times it by uh, different components of of each of those. Now when you're looking at um, trying to decide on each of those uh, threats and hazards what it is that you're looking for. Um, if you look up here at the top of the um, of the slide, you're going to see uh, several columns and the first one's the probability. And then you're going to see the numbers uh, four being highly likely, three being likely, two being possible and then one being unlikely. And then the uh, the methodology under each of those. So you're going to have like for highly likely event is probable within the calendar year. Uh, or it has up to uh, uh, one in a year chance of occurring. Uh, history of events is greater than 33% likely per year, or the event is very likely to occur. So, so it could end up being something that is um, um, very likely, like um, a flooding or a severe thunderstorm, an ice storm, um, and then um, and then you look at the magnitude and the severity in the center column, which will give you the categories of catastrophic, critical, moderate, negligible, and all of the methodologies that you can associate with that. And then to the right of that chart, you have your warning time, which is minimal, marginal, limited, and optimal. And again, it has um, those particular uh, methodologies. And then to the right of that is the duration uh, with four being prolonged or extended, uh, intermediate, and then one is brief, and then the methodologies that go along with that. Next, I'm going to show you um, um, our um, environmental calculated priority risk index, which looks at uh, everything that the um, that the CPRI does, except it's uh, based on the environmental formula. And so this takes out um, 
the um, um, this takes out the um, 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 the the warning time because of the fact that oftentimes the environmental piece uh, uh, we have no warning. Uh, now we can look at potentially this being used for human caused uh, disease outbreak um, or something that is um, like a um, uh, animal. Um, or another component of it that, that that there basically is very little to no warning time. So it so it pushes uh, the formula. Um, it it moderates it to a um, to a to a more um, um, structured and higher higher rate of methodology. So um, and then again you 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 see the methodologies here um, in this particular slide. Okay, um, so let's look and see what it looks like at the end of the day once you guys do all of it and how and how we assess it and then how we break it down and how we put it into our uh, statewide report. So here you'll see a, really, a risk rating table, um, which we have modified slightly because we noticed um, in the in the um, in Web EOC it was um, it was um, um, it was made to where the severe risk component was only those that were that were um, that were rated as a four, which was virtually impossible. And so we knew that there were that that, that we needed that dif um, difference between the severe risk and the high risk, moderate and low. And so we um, we modified this a bit so it would demonstrate and show us and the counties exactly um, um, uh, what it is that we are rating as the severe risk versus a high risk. So next we have um, our state aggregated data from 2016 to 2020. And Joshua has actually um, um, uh, created a, um, a dashboard that, that, that we'll be rolling out soon that you all will be able to look at the different counties and click on those counties based on either year or a combination of years. And then uh, you'll be able to print out these reports for your own county and they will look like this uh, for your own records and for you to give to uh, your um, um, uh, your um, um, county commissioners, mayors, um, stakeholders, whatever. But it will definitely show and I guarantee you, um, uh, you show a um, uh, a, uh, a a chart like this to your stakeholders and you're going to get quite a bit of feedback which you should have gotten on the front end of it to say okay as a as an entire entity we need to sit down and hazard identification risk assessment as a community and um and and that way it's not just all on the ema to um to try to guess exactly how those um how those um um risks are identified. So as you can see here in the state, you've got the cyber attack, flash flood, severe thunderstorm, human disease outbreak, and domestic terrorism as our top five risks for Indiana from 2016 to 2020. For the North region, uh, cyber attack, human disease outbreak, domestic terrorism, severe thunderstorm, hazardous waste material and the tornado EF3 to EF5 is the most um, is the most severe. And actually, I think I did the top six for that. For the central region, cyber attack, human disease outbreak, flash flood, severe thunderstorm and domestic terrorism, followed by the public utility failure. And then for the south region, flash flood is number one. Cyber tornado EF3 to EF5, tornado EF0 to EF2, and a severe thunderstorm. Uh, you'll notice that again for the different um, um, districts and regions, um, it is it is it is it it varies. Um, you'll notice that the human disease outbreak uh, for for this area isn't um, until after the public utility failure, which is still in the red but it's quite a bit farther down the road. All right, I am now going to uh, briefly uh, uh, talk about the Thyra and, uh, and, and go into a little bit about this so you guys can uh, 
understand, especially for the new EMAs or those that are wanting to kind of just get a refresher here as far as how it is that uh, that we come up with this. Now, um, now what we did in 2019 was, uh, in full disclosure, we did not utilize our higher up to identify those um, risks and threats that we used in 2019 Thyra. Um, it wasn't until after it that we became aware of how it was best going to be um, captured uh, and and how how it really ties into the um, how it really ties into the fire and how we should really uh, capitalize on those HIRA um, um, assessments as well as uh, which also uh, brings into account our mitigation plans. And all of this was um, uh, realized after um, uh, quite a bit of discussion and research uh, with all of the EMA's feedback um, and, and, and just that kind of that deep dive research into, okay, we've got all of these data sets, we've got all of this data that, 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 that we capture. And why is it, you know, and, you know, kudos to all the EMAs, you know, for bringing it to our attention. Why is it that I have to reiterate over and over and over again the same information in a different format? Why is it that I can't put this one place and, and, have, and have it um, um, assessed and aggregated for me to then just add in what has changed or what add in, you know, what it is that we want to do. Um, and we have definitely taken heed to that, uh, which is why um, we are, um, uh, why number one, we have uh, in the 2020, S, the 2020 SPR um, uh, review, which I will go over here in a bit, uh, we definitely aggregated what you guys have for 2019 and we, uh, and we captured all of that for you. Uh, so then all you would have to do is go in and update it. Um, and then we also added in uh, where you can update your uh, training requirements again, which I will show you guys, but to make it easier on you so you don't have to keep on um, um, uh, saying the same thing over and over and over again. We want you all to be able to report something and for us to be able to capture that, um, aggregate it and use it because the one thing that is is the worst thing is when uh, you start out um, re reporting on data and then because of the depth and the daunting task of it and the fire is in the SPR that initial one is definitely that um, 32 core capabilities over five mission areas it's a beast but but starting out with, yeah, you know, we're, we're going to do this. And then by the time you get to the fifth or sixth core capability, you're like, I am exhausted doing this. And 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 I just can't give this all of my effort. And that's what we don't want, because what we want is an accurate assessment of your county. And um, and we're hoping that by um, uh, capturing this data, sharing this data, aggregating this data for you, um, that it will help you um, uh, not suffer from Thyroland um, exhaustion and, uh, <laughs> and fatigue because we definitely don't want that to happen. All right, so let's look at the Thyra. So the Thyra is a three-phase approach, as is the SPR. So it takes those, and again, we're going to be identifying those hazards and selecting those critical ones um, from the threats and hazards from the Hira. And then it lists them, um, it gives them the threats uh, and it gives them context. So we create scenarios based on those. And then we also look at impact numbers based on uh, established capability targets. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what we used um, last year. Oh, before I do that, I apologize. I'm going to talk real quick about um, our mission areas and our core capabilities. So these are the five national preparedness system mission areas and the 32 core capabilities that we currently um, um, uh, measure when we are when we are assessing um, what what these are in our in our FIRA. So you'll notice uh, in the top there are the yellow uh, highlighted uh, planning information, planning public information, warning, and operational coordination. 
All of those are what we call cross-cutting core capabilities. They cut across all five mission areas of prevention, protection, mitigation, response, and recovery. Then we have intelligence and information sharing, interdiction and disruption, screening, search, and detection under prevention and protection. And those are cross-cutting uh, capabilities under those particular mission areas. Then over at the response and recovery side, we also have the infrastructure systems that are, um, that are cross-cutting across those. So what we did with 2019 was we divided out our, um, uh, our, our scenarios based on those uh, categories that we also identify in our fire and our SPR, which are the human cause, um, technological, and natural. And we identify two human cause, two technological, and two natural. And then because of the fact that response has uh, the most core capabilities that we have to assess, we divided those out um, under uh, the type of a VBIED and then a utility disruption. And then we took our human cause, we um, picked our number one, which was cyber security under the protection and then uh, technological, we had our hazmat chemical for the prevention mission area, uh, a flood for natural, for natural um, um, hazards, and that was under the mitigation uh, um, mission area. And then for recovery, we picked a tornado under the natural hazards or under the, um, um, yeah, uh, under the natural hazards uh, category. So you'll notice that we also color coded each of these and they are color coded throughout the whole community uh, input form, which actually um, our form was recognized uh, by FEMA as a best practice and how we did it. And so we're pretty proud of that. Um, and we do feel as though um, with the data that we received it was um, uh, pretty well received. Uh, so uh, now I'm going to um, uh, get out of this and I'm going to go in and I'm going to share with you uh, that whole community input form um, so you are able to um, so you're able to uh, uh, I'll, I'll be able to show that to you here in real time. Just one second. All right. So here we have the Thyra uh, whole community input form. So we start out here with, um, and this again is a very complex form that we have tried to um, break down into bite-sized bite chunks. Um, on the um, on the um, on the first part of this, we have here a, um, and I'm going to hide this tab so we can uh, show more of it. Uh, we have here the introduction tab, as you can see on the bottom, we have uh, introduction and then all of the tabs along the bottom row, um, Thyro 123, SPR 123, um, some additional functional gaps, our quick summary and standard impacts, and then our core capabilities. So on this first one, we have contract and jurisdictional information um, that, that we collect on this. And we've also added in color code keys that are, um, um, identified on each of these um, tabs. And so when uh, our EMAs would see a response needed uh, or a red, uh, that, that would indicate a response needed, um, which would literally be a, a, you click on that box and then you're able to then type in um, uh, whatever information that you have. Um, obviously, you know, we, I was um, uh, um, watching Batman that week that, that I was developing this. So we have Gotham City and the Gotham City EMA. Um, but you could click on, um, you know, the email and, you know, you can have Batman at gmail.com. Um, and then the data submission, um, you know, would be, uh, you know, hopefully by 11 uh, 15. Um, and that would have been in uh, 2019. Uh, response provided uh, is um, uh, in pink. So these are the ones that we auto populated for you. And then in brown uh, is the if it's applicable. So quickly going through the tabs um, um, for the Thyra, this is how we were able to identify. Uh, and we actually did all of these. So this 
entire thyroid step one was already completed. And, um, and, and this is where we, again, identified those technological, natural, and human cause threats and hazards, uh, the type, uh, the name, uh, whether or not it was a terrorist event, and then the mission area. And so then in the thyroid step two, uh, this is where we um, uh, define the context and the impacts. And here uh, in the show and the hide, uh, the folks click on it and it expands it out. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you'll be able to see. Uh, this was a um, this was a um, 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 a scenario that we created uh, for the uh, for the EMAs that um, let me see if I could take it out a little bit that basically um, uh, captured a um, 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 in, and, and this is a hazmat release of a chemical, but also remember that is it is a um, um, it is a prevention mission area. So up there we have the blue on the top with the color code key. So it's a prevention. So it's not a response. And that's probably one of the hardest things for um, the EMAs to kind of understand. You know, they're so used to courses um, in which uh, they take a class and you're given a hazard or, or you're given a scenario and you have to respond to it. Um, and and this is why it's 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 a challenge when we're looking at uh, creating um, scenarios for all of the different mission areas and then um, how we are looking at um, identifying the data that we need for our impacts um, and those estimates because um, the other component of the Thyra is that FEMA has um, um, listed out different standardized impacts and estimates that go along with that. So basically, as you're reading this, uh, this scenario and the ones that follow, um, it's asking you to anticipate um, how many different um, how many different impacts you would have um, based on these categories. And so I'm going to slide this over here a second and um, I'm trying to um, figure out a way for me to be able to um, make this over here. OK, here we go. So these are the um, so these are the standardized impact estimates. Uh, and again, all of these are um, based out of impact estimates that uh, FEMA has identified. Um, as the impacts that most affect our counties and most affect um, cross-cutting lifelines um, and our ESFs and, it, and, what, and what we need to do uh, in order to um, uh, uh, do accurate damage assessments um, um, and respond, uh, protect, mitigate, um, and recover from. So it looks as impact categories as effective healthcare facilities, animals requiring shelter, food, water, customers, um, uh, um, exposed individuals, fatalities, hazmat sites, uh, miles of road affected, people affected, and and you see people with access and functional needs requiring screening, ex, uh, people requiring long term uh, housing, medical care, rescue, evacuation, shelter um uh, food water structural fires so but what these what these impact categories are these are directly attached to the 32 core capabilities that each one is assessed and looked at um, throughout the high the thyra and the spr process so what we did was in developing our scenarios we attached um, um these these impacts um, to these um, to these scenarios, and we and we estimated. And again, this particular um, uh, thyra is an example uh, for the counties to be able to use. So we we based our estimates on a um, a Gotham County. So like your uh, normal county that you might have out there and based on the scenario how many people might estimated either be at the um, uh, either might be in that area or at the event 
Um, and then we highlighted those affected and those um, um, and those target areas, and we've and we gathered those estimates and plugged those in here. Obviously, the 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 thought is um, that the that the EMA would then be able to go back in there, read the scenario, and then say yes, no, maybe. Um, I think that in a in 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 a Fourth of July event, uh, we might not have four thousand people if it's small. We might only have you know a thousand, or we might have twenty thousand. So um, they're able to make that adjustment based on the scenario, and and then simply point and click and make those adjustments um, um, in those areas. So um, it's it's truly based on what that is uh, with that um, uh, that that county um, EMA and with the stakeholders um, makes those adjustments. Now, regarding this, as we um, as I show you uh, the rest of the uh, tool, you will see that these um, that these numbers are going to reappear or if they're changed, they're going to um, show up again um, automatically populated. And that was one of the things that we did was we we um, we captured what the minimum requirement standardized impact estimates were that FEMA was looking for with those core capabilities. And we assigned um, uh, a formula that would automatically populate it based on whatever it was that the EMA um, was um, putting in there. So for that particular scenario, for that particular mission area, those were what was highlighted were these four um, impact estimates. And then underneath that, uh, it's it's drop down menus of whether or not uh, what kind of sources were being used. So if it was uh, if they if they used a hazard mitigation plan, they would click no um, or yes. If if they didn't use their response plan, again we just used we just clicked yes on a few of them just to give just to remind them that this is what they need to do. If or if they didn't use it again, they could just click the delete and it would be gone. So. This is how, and then um, uh, over here to the right, um, we looked at um, the sources that we have. Um, my apologies. Um, the sources, did you develop, what source did you use to develop the context description and calculate your impacts? This was an optional um, um, field that if there was additional um, sources that they used, they could then have free text and write it in there. Same on the above. Um, it was a non-standard impact, which was optional. If, if there was something additional that they wanted to capture, then they could um, put that in there. So um, each of these, um, which is part of the Thyra Step 2 process, um, has one for each scenario. So each scenario, it clicks on it. It has different um, uh, impact estimates that are captured and then um, and then again, the county would go in there, uh, modify the numbers, and um, and then um, um, uh, and again, everything is color coded. And then whatever it is that you know they need to make sure that they assess, and and then once that step is done, then they would go on to Thyra step three. Now, keeping in mind, the Thyra component is only due every three years. So this piece only has to be done every three years. Now, here are the 32 core capabilities. So this is when it really gets to be daunting um, with the fact that um, there is, um, uh, you have to go through each of these core capabilities and do those assessments. So again, you will notice that there are certain items that have already been pre-populated based on uh, the fact that if it's pink, we've already responded and we've identified that based on what you identified um, in your previous um, in your previous um, step. So here we have, and then the only thing that the um, that the EMA would have to do uh, is then identify uh, what those um, what what we call the time hack is. What are those time hacks? 
What is it that you, uh, um, uh, what is it that, that uh, how long within uh, reading this particular capability target, which is what they call it, um, would you then um, indicate